by the way, my name is Melinda Holt. I'm with the Outreach and Technical Assistance Network, <laughs> and I have a lot of certifications. Okay, um, how to use this deck? There's a table of contents. HTTPS colon slash slash bit dot ly slash capital D OCS the number two capital S as in Sam E E bitly slash docs to C. Okay, all right. So that's the bitly, and this is the dynamic deck, the dynamic book. The thing that was added was special characters today so that's new and what we're going to be doing today is kind of a re well not really a review but i wanted you to realize you could do more through the file menu so i'm going to do just just a quick little more on the file menu and then we're going to go to the insert menu on docs we had quite a few questions actually in um, the support because people want to know how to share with their students so you want to share this document of proportional magnitude with your students. Uh, you want to give them all a copy, but you know your students, maybe they're not as tech savvy as you are, or it's just too hard for them, but you know that they have email. And because they have email, you can send them something, yeah? You can send them something directly from the doc. You don't have to open up your Gmail. You don't have to open up your Outlook. You don't have to open up anything. If you have docs, you can send a document to anybody. So we're all going to select the file menu. And then we're going to go down to where it says email as attachment. It's right underneath download. We're going to click that. This is some super fantastical magic <clears throat> because number one, I can send a copy to myself. Um, it doesn't list me because I should know who I am, right? <laughs> so from here, we can type in names or we could also paste in names. If I copied an entire column of email addresses from a form that I collected, uh, you probably could. Bob, I'm not sure. I've never used WhatsApp, but I have heard of it. So I don't know, but this, that would be something to test out. So I can um, put names in here and I can, and I should put in a message. Uh, and if I don't write more than open this link, I would not, um, I wouldn't fault the persons that I'm sending this to for not opening it. Please, when you're adding a message, this is actually going to be sent from your Gmail account or your Google account that you're using. Okay. Uh, if you're using G Suites, then it will be coming from that account. If you don't put more information, then open this link. Um, oops. I don't know what happened there. <laughs> that was weird. Um, well, let's try this again. So the message should contain more information than just open the link or open the document. Okay, if it doesn't, then you, sh you should not be surprised if people don't open it. Because how many times have we gotten messages? Look at this really cool picture. Click here, right? No, don't do that. Okay, and, I, and don't expect your students to do that. So put something personal in here. Okay, um, type a message. This is from teacher. Okay, uh, this is your assignment. Okay, now uh, you can include the, the content in the email, which makes the email really, really long. So I don't suggest that unless it's a really short doc. But here's the magic right here, folks. Right underneath that checkbox, you're going to see the options to send to your students. All right, so you can send this as an RTF uh, that was in the last workshop. It's also on the slide deck. And RTF is rich text format. It'll keep your bold. It'll keep your underlined. It'll keep your links. But it'll take out your pictures because it's just text. Okay. Uh, plain text takes out the bold and the underlined and everything. So it's just text. But you're also given the option of sending it as a PDF. Okay, so that the entire document becomes a PDF and when you hit send, 
it goes to those people as an attachment, as a PDF. So that is a really cool way of um, quote unquote sharing. I went back to file and then email as attachment. So this is a really cool way of, like I said, quote unquote sharing um, as any format that you want. Now, is Google Docs listed here? No, because the assumption is that you would not uh, send the document, you would actually share the document. So if you want to share a document, we've covered that. You go to the share button and you can um, uh, turn on the, the link or add people as editors or viewers. Our LMS is Schoology. We need to send all links to that site. How to send Google Docs there. You don't actually send Google Docs to your LMS. You actually um, send your LMS to the Google Doc, um, it, which I think we're saying the same thing. So when you go to Schoology, you're going to want to attach your documents or you're going to want to get the shareable link of your documents, Suzette. So at the top of every document, every slide, every sheet, you're going to go to that share button. I'm going to hit share. And I think this new share interface has been rolled out to everybody. If you see something different, it just means that um, you're on the slow track and I'm on the fast track. No offense, but that's what it means. Um, I think, though, we should all be seeing basically the same thing here. So when you open up the share link, you can actually add people, okay? And you can make them viewers. So you could do it that way. Or I'm going to hit cancel here. Um, when you hit the share button, you can get the shareable link. Okay, now it's right now, shareable links are restricted. So only people added can open this link. So what do you want to do? You want to change that. You want to change it to anyone with the link. And this is the way you would put it in Schoology or in Moodle or in uh, Google Class. Well, no, Google Classroom works much better, but um, Blackboard. Okay, so any LMS other than Google Classroom. Google Classroom attaches automatically. It's a beautiful thing. So right here, we want to change anyone with the link. I'm gonna click on that. And I'm giving some I'm given some options here. So anyone with the link can view, or anyone with the link can comment, or anyone with the link can edit. If you ever choose that you are really giving, you're putting yourself in some hot water. Don't ever do that with your class. Make them viewers or commenters. Um, anyone with the link or restricted, you're, you're able to go back and forth as you wish. Okay. Uh, and then once you do that, here's the big long link that you need. You're given the option to copy it. And then you can paste it into your Schoology or your, your Moodle or your Blackboard or whatever. Okay. So it seems the new share interface does not include option to send to myself. So you have no record of when it was shared or the message accompanied it. Well, yeah, not so much, except through version, no, version history doesn't cover it either. So um, Robbie, you're right. There is no way to send it to yourself. Here's the thing though, you know when, um, you know when you've done something to a document through version history. So you can look at that and you can get an idea of when things were done, okay? So if you're worried about, um, and right here, you're not going to know who is looking at that document. When you have anyone with the link, that means if my student thinks this is a really cool document and they send it to their family or their friends, they have the link now so they can open it. Now, I know a bunch of teachers are sitting at their chairs and go, ah, no, I don't want that to happen. Well, why not? Let that sink in for a minute. Why not? What's the big deal? No one can do anything to it because you're just letting them view it. Okay. If I change the share option after I've already shared it, does it go back and change the way it was shared previously? Absolutely. So if I go ahead and say done here, I've shared it. I get this uh, icon up at the top. Instead of a lock, the share doesn't have a lock anymore. It has anyone with the link. Okay, a little avatar with a link underneath it. If I click on that, 
and I change it to restricted, that means only people that I've added to the document can view it. So if anybody <clears throat> was looking at the document at the same time that I changed that share, they'll still be able to look at it until they hit the refresh button on their, uh, on their, their browser or if they close the tab and try and open it back up, they won't be able to do it because I've changed the share right in the middle. So let's say, um, let's say Elisa has sh shared this with me, okay? She shared this with me and then right in the middle of something she decides, oh, nope, I don't wanna share that with Melinda anymore. So she changes the share link, okay? I'm still on the document so I can still look at it the way she uh, originally intended, but as soon as I hit refresh, or close the tab, I won't be able to get back to it. So Sharon, I think that answers your question. Um, you know, change the share link at midnight. <laughs> no one will be on it, you hope. <laughs> okay, all right. Uh, so we've done the sharing, we've done file, email as attachment, which I think is gonna help a lot of you, especially some of you that, that had that question. Well, I don't wanna share with my students or my students aren't able to share or even my staff, my staff don't want to share. Well, okay, email as attachment, okay? Um, and just for grins and giggles, cause I want to see, did I share this? Yeah, on version history, remember we covered this last week. You can see everything that you've done on a document as you go down and I believe his name is Rob. Uh, you're right. It doesn't say anything here about sharing. So me, I don't, I, I, I can't, I can't know why you wouldn't know that you've shared with somebody <laughs> or why you would need to know exactly when you shared it. Um, if you do need to know that, um, you know, you write it down off to the side a little bit or maybe even put a note in the document down at the bottom. And if you don't want people to see it, it's really easy. You just copy, you know, select the text, make it white. Oops, select the text, make it white. Boom, there, no one can see it. So, oh, retain the message that went with it. Okay, when you share with somebody, uh, you can, here we go. When you get the viewable link, that's not a message to anybody. Okay, when I add people, like Elisa, right here, I'm notifying them. When I get, then I do get notified. Okay, I will get, no, I'll get a copy of this message. So does that help? So you have to add them as a, a viewer, commenter, or editor, not just the shareable link. The shareable link means anybody can get it, so you're not giving a message for it. Okay, I think that answered that question. All right, we're gonna get out of the share here. And I'm back to restricted. Okay, now, now we're gonna have some fun. Uh, not that that wasn't fun too, but uh, the insert button. A lot of people don't know other than you can insert an image, a uh, table, and that's about it. That's all, <laughs> as far as people go. Or you might go, you know, some of you might know about headers and footers, uh, but there's a lot of stuff in here in the insert button on a document that you can do that, that will dress up your document or make it easier for your students. Um, the image certainly, okay? You can add an image from your drive. You can add them from your photos. If you've got the link to one, um, if you've got your camera, you know, you've got a tablet. If you've got docs on your tablet, you could certainly take a picture or on your phone. Um, you could also search the web. So there are lots of ways to do an image. This is already in the handout. I'm not gonna cover these. We have covered these in, in some previous uh, workshops. It's the same in slides as well. You can do all of these things here. Table, you can add a table. Now they give you the option to go up to 20 by 20, okay? Um, if you need more rows than that or columns than that, that's a huge table, but they will let you do that as well, okay? Um, how do, can you send an email attachment to a class without adding individual names of students? Hmm, 
That's a good question. I, in the past, the, and I'm talking long past, you used to be able to add a group. So if you have contacts, it should, in the two field, and I haven't tested this out, Mary, so I'm not really sure, but in the two field within contacts, if you have a group called class and you've added all of those students to it, you should be able to add the group called class um, to the document. And right now I don't have a group called class in my contents or in my contacts, so that's why it's not coming up. And I can't remember the groups that I have. So maybe we can test that out later, um, but that's the only way I can think of right now. Okay. Uh, okay, insert, we're back to insert. So insert, um, you can also add, oh, we already talked about the table. So I'll put a table in here real quick. Uh, this is a really good idea if you are going to, maybe ju you just have a lesson and you want, everybody to see everyone else's work. Student ID and sentence. All right, and you want everyone to, um, I should have done this before. You want everyone, I'm sorry, I'm trying to merge here. So we gotta go to, I'm just gonna right click. <laughs> I love right cl clicking, right clicking is the bomb. So I'm gonna get rid of these. I'm right clicking and I'm deleting those two rows. There we go. So I've got a student ID and then um, add sentence. Okay. And then I just keep tabbing, tab, 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 tab. Okay. And then we'll have student ID one. So we're gonna make this a bulleted. We're gonna make number one, we're gonna select the whole cell. You see how I've got the whole cell selected. Okay. And I'm going to make that a numbered list, okay? And I'm gonna select the whole cell again. I'm going to copy that. And then I'm gonna drag it down and paste. Ta-da! That is how you get a numbered list in a table. So if I copied just this number one, then pasted it in the next row, it would become a number one and then a number one, and then a number one, and number one. The trick is to copy the entire cell. Okay, so the trick is to copy the entire cell so that if I copy A here, I'm gonna cross my fingers, oops, copy. And then when I go down to the next three cells and paste, there we go. So it retains the, the cell knows that it's a numbered list, okay? Not the numbered list itself, the cell knows, okay? All right, so you can add a table, you can assign student IDs, and then when student number three comes in, they know that they have to type, they type here, right? And then when student number four comes in, they know that they type in the number four slot. So if you assign student numbers, or if you have their IDs off to the side, or if you wanna type their names, um, that way everybody knows where to type when you're sharing a document, okay? So this is how you would add a table, okay? So we went to the insert menu, we inserted a table. Um, I just did two columns really short assignments. We've got a student ID column so they know where they should be typing. And you know, you could also um, add a column maybe to the, to the right or the left where you would have next to student ID, you're gonna insert a column to the right and I want them to type their name. Okay, so I know that student number one is Bill or student number two is Robbie, okay? Then they all see each other's work Yes, not only that, but gasp, they could also change each other's work. Oh my God, it's a collaborative document. It's okay, all right? So wrap your head around collaboration, all right? Number one, you're learning, you're learning them. Oh my God, you're teaching them how to come into a shared space. You're teaching them only to write on their space. 
you're teaching them how to help one another on this space. So there's a lot of collaborative lessons here beyond the assignment of adding a sentence. Um, you can right click anywhere on a document and you will get a, a sub menus. Um, so anyways, uh, yes, you will know who types and, and, and where they type. Now, here's the thing, you can share this with students. All you have to do is share with the shareable link. They don't have to be signed into anything. Will they need Google Docs? Yeah, they will. So that means they're going to have a, a Gmail of some sort. Okay, there's lots of ways to have a Gmail address. They could actually use their Yahoo or their Hotmail as a Gmail address. That's a whole nother workshop. So they will need Google Docs in order to um, edit. Right, so if you're collaborating with them, you're going to give them edit rights. Uh, that's, that's scary for a lot of teachers. If you don't want the original document to get screwed up, make a copy of it. Have it off to the side just in case it goes so far out of whack that you can't fix it. And then remember, folks, we have file, version history, see version history. So you can see when the students are, are um, coming in and doing anything to this document, you'll see who it is and what they do. So if someone's not playing nice, you'll know who it is. Uh, at that point, you can make them a viewer. You can actually change their view rights, but then you'd have to change it for everybody. So you'd have to make everybody an editor. You'd have to get rid of a shareable link, and then you'd have to make that particular person a viewer. You, so you've had trouble using the correct share designation to allow students access. If there's a share access, you have to have this shared. Okay, that's, that's number one on anybody. Uh, if you're sharing anything in an LMS, okay, if you're sharing it in Moodle, if you're sharing it in Blackboard, if you're sharing it in Canvas, Schoology, whatever you're using, if this document that you're trying to get your students to view is locked, they can't get to it. It's private only to you until you hit that share button and change it. So you have to change it to anyone with the link. What this means right now is that I have to add all of my students to the share up at the top. So I have to add all their email addresses. Then only those students will be able to view this document or to edit this document. Nine times out of 10, you're gonna want it as view. But you'd have to add them up here if you keep it restricted. If you add new students, if you get new students, they won't be able to see it until you add them to this list. All right, so it makes it easier on you if you change to any, if you change that restriction to change to anyone with the link. Okay, so you click on that, then anybody who has the link, this is what you're gonna put in the, in the canvas, this is what you're gonna put in the, whatever LMS you're using, you're gonna copy that link, and then it's shareable. So if Canvas, sees your drive if you allow canvas to see your drive and you can actually tell canvas i want this document docs demo and they're supposed to be toc docs demo toc i want canvas to to put this in um, my assignment it can now because it's been shared so if there's a lock it's not going to work it has to be shared if I create an editable document, how can I give one document per student? You have to use Classroom. <laughs> That's the only way to do it. Um, I don't know that any other LMS is able to create a copy of one document and share it out to students. Um, I could be wrong on that. Uh, a lot of different LMS. Go ahead, Alisa. Uh, sorry, I just, do you, is it no, too please. difficult to show them copy in the URL? copy in the you could do that yes yes okay we'll do that i've done it before but i'll do it again it's okay that's how i, I knew it from you that's right. how i do it yeah so i'm going to i'm actually going to delete the table all right so here i'm going to hit paste and i'm going to make this really big this is the big long document link okay so um first i have to go back to my share I had to check something. Uh, what am I checking? I went to the share button. I went to the gear at the top of the window. 
Okay, I'm going to click that. And I need to make sure that viewers, commenters can see the option to download, print, and copy. All right, this has to be checked for what Elisa just alluded to. This is really good magic, folks. So watch carefully. Um, you have to make sure again that anyone with the link can view. Okay, so I'm going to copy that link and then I'm going to hit done. Here's the link. I'll just, I'll paste it again just to make sure I got it right. I did. Okay, so here's the link. Now, here, everyone put down your mousies and look now. Look at the Zoom window. You've got a big long link. That is actually the name of your document. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to change the name in order that when you send the link to your students, it automatically makes a copy of the document for them. They're asked, actually, if they want to make a copy of the document. Problem, number one, they need to have a, a Gmail or they have to have a Google account in order for this to work. If they don't have a Google account, it won't work. Okay, so that's problem number one. And actually, that's the only problem you should have. Um, oh, no, I thought of problem number two. Problem number two, if you are on a club, if your email ends with at uh, gardengroveusd.net, okay, or at lausd.net, or uh, scoey.org, if your URL, if your domain ends in at anything other than Gmail, that means you're on a club. And when you try to do what I'm showing you right now, it might say, uh-uh, nope, not letting you do that. <laughs> okay, so you need to test it out. So here we go. At the end of your share link, paste it in an email, paste it in a word, in a doc, paste it anywhere where you have text. Paste that big long link. Okay, and then at the end of it, you're going to see edit question mark USP equals sharing. When you have a share link, that's what it will say. If it says anything different, you got problems. You need to go back to that share button and get the, the shareable link. Okay, so edit question mark USP equals sharing. You're going to take that text and you're going to just get rid of it. And then you're going to type the word copy. So that when you send this link to your students, and I'm going to open up another browser. All right, so I copied that link, and now I'm going to paste it. And we're going to pretend I opened up my email. I saw a message from my teacher. I clicked on the link, and there's the link. Okay, so see it ends in copy, right? So I'm going to hit enter, because this is what it would look like for your students. You have to wait for the magic to happen. And in Firefox, we go, thing, thing, thing. Here's what they see. Whoa, here's what they see. <laughs> Move it back over here. Copy, copy. Would you like to make a copy of Docs Demo TOC? They are asked that question. Okay. I say, yes, make a copy. And I have to wait for the magic again. And there it is. Now, here is the copy of the document. And I know it's a copy of the document because I see file, edit, view, insert, format, tools, blah, 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 blah. I see all of the menu items, okay? I also see that there's the share button and it's locked and it says private only to me. Now this is me as a student with my um, raccoon face with the tongue hanging out, okay? This is my document now. I can take anything out of this document, it doesn't do anything to my teacher's document. Here's my teacher. I'm going to take this link and I'm going to give it to my students somehow, some way, somewhere. I could actually, I'm copying right now, I'm doing a control C and I'm going to type the word doc, oops, document. I'll make it bigger so you can see it. Okay, so here's the word document. 
And just so you don't think I'm pulling anything funny, I'm going to get rid of all that. I still have the link. I still copied it. I'm selecting the Word document. I'm selecting the link tool. I'm going to paste that big long link with the word copy at the end and apply it. Now when students click on this link within this document or within a web page or on an LMS or anywhere, as soon as they click it, they will get that, do you want to make a copy? Okay. And if, as long as they say yes, they'll get a copy of the document. So it doesn't matter if you change the editor or view only designation after you've sent the link. No, it doesn't matter when you change it. Um, the link updates itself because a document updates itself. So the link is this, this link is actually attached to the document. So as the document changes, the link changes as well. The link permissions change as well. Okay. So after each student makes a copy of a document and edits it, how do I find their copies? Well, that's a really good question because you can't unless they share it with you, Brad. So that's something else you have to be aware of. You have to be able to share, they have to be able to share it back with you or they have to be able to upload it into the LMS that you're using. Or, I mean, the easiest way is just for them to go to share and then type your name right here so that you are able to see it. And then you would go to share with me, bada bing, bada boom, okay? Or again, within any, any LMS, they're able to upload their or link to their assignments, right? So you could get it that way. Um, you could also get it by, they get the shareable link and just send you the link. And maybe you have a document with all the links on it. I mean, there's lots of ways to do it. You could have a form, right? Everybody go to the share button on your document, get the shareable link, then come back to the form and paste your link. Make sure you paste your name too. Otherwise, I don't know who you are. <laughs> um, or you'd have a name field within the form. Okay. All right, so lots on sharing. We've, we've got really two good ways of getting the document to your students. You're going to email as an attachment, okay? Or you could do that copy link that I just showed you, or you could get the shareable link. So that's actually three ways, okay? All right. Uh, if students share it back, will it have the same name as your original document unless they know to rename it? Abs absolutely, Corey. So whatever they do to the document, I mean, it's their document once they make a copy, so they can do anything they want with it. Um, if you tell them, don't change the title, um, then they won't. Or you might tell them to, at the end of your document, put a hyphen and your last name, right? That way you have the title of your document, a hyphen. You might even put the hyphen there for them. So at the end of their document, put your last name. Make it even simpler for them. Okay. All right. Good, Shirley. I'm glad it worked in your table. All right. Um, now, insert. I'm going to get rid of these links here. We're going to go to insert now. Okay, because there's some things here that you don't know about, and I know you don't, and you should, because it's so cool. Uh, number one is special characters. I just added this this morning. I want to make sure we get to it. This opens a window that is really small, um, and it usually opens up to a category area, okay? And there's lots of symbols here. Now, some of you might know about this already, but I think there's some things about it you don't know. So watch carefully. Uh, we can look through all of the categories. There's a bunch of symbols. There's emojis you can add to your document. There's different punctuations. See right here, we got that paragraph uh, thing that people, especially teachers, English specific <laughs> like. Uh, you can put in the at symbol, big deal. Well, it's a big deal because it's, it's bigger. Um, there's different, all kinds of different stuff. There's um, Latin. Okay, so we've got common Latin, enclosed Latin, flipped mirrored Latin. Um, there's Greek. There are American scripts. There's Canadian, uh, Cherokee, and historic, Desiree. 
Um, lots of stuff here. There's a lot of uh, Chinese. The, the Han is Chinese characters. There's East Asian characters. So lots of different kind of characters. Um, and as you hit the category type, so here we have Southeast Asian scripts. I can go from Balinese to Javanese to Thai vet to Thai, and I get all these little special characters. Now, here's the thing. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to X out of this. I'm not going to do anything. I'm going to look at where my cursor is blinking, okay? And then wherever, or let's say I want my special character um, at the end of document outline. So I have my cursor blinking there, okay? Then I go to insert, special character, okay? And I choose a character. I'm just going to leave it here. I'm going to choose this one. What is this? Tie character to patak and I click and on this window you can move this window around okay so the insert special characters you can move it around so I can move it to the left so that I could see wherever my cursor was blinking that is where the character went I just added a space now I can select that character and I can make it mucho bigger boom there we go they also have uh, for you math teachers out there, they have math characters as well. As soon as I move the window down so that I can see it, there we go. Numbers, okay, so you've got all kinds of different numbers um, and you can go to fraction related. Um, there's, here we go, three eighths. Remember that's right here is where my cursor was. And you can go back and forth between special characters and your keyboard so you can keep that open so i'm going to three eighths plus three sixteenths or one six whatever <laughs> whatever's coming up um, and i can make it bigger boom how simple is that so lots of different categories lots of different um characters that you can select fr from now here's the thing looking through all these lists is very tedious okay so maybe you might want to do a search, which you can do. Maybe you're looking for the trademark. So all I have to do is start typing trade. Oh, look at that. Didn't even have to type it all, but here's the trademark character, right? Boom. And there it is. Not that one six is trademarked, but there we go. I can also, I mean, you can do a, a, a search for anything, copyright. Everybody wants a copyright, boom. Okay, so there's the symbol for copyright. Now here's the thing, I want everyone to look, stop looking at your keyboards, look over here, because underneath the search box is this box right here. And what it is, is actually a drawing tool. All right, so I can draw, da -da -da -da. I'm just clicking and holding my mouse, and as I'm drawing, Google's trying to figure out what the heck is she drawing? Oh, here are some options. And there's the one that I wanted. Or maybe this is the one I wanted because I'm a really bad drawer. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. So you can draw anything. You can also, oh man, I messed up. You can hit the little refresh key. If you're using a tablet, you would use your finger or a little pen, right? You don't have to though you can use your mouse i'm using my mouse right now you see where my cursor is and i'm going to let's just see what it does with this look at that so i drew a little cloud now i'm going to make it a tree aha uh -huh. so you can insert these things okay google has a very big library of i'm going to call them special characters but this is more of an emoji and I can make it bigger, okay? As a matter of fact, just for grins and giggles, did you know that you can get bigger than 96? Okay, it says 96 is the end, but what if I want 200 or 300? Oops, I have to select it first, there we go. Let's go 200, boom. All right, so you can make this special character as big as you want all right so that's something to keep in mind 
special characters. Um, I'm getting rid of all of it so I can show you something else here. So yeah, you can draw special characters. So if you can't, you know what it looks like, but you're not sure what it's called, draw it. All right. Um, you can also insert equations, which brings the special characters up um, into a little box. And unfortunately, my, my cursor was right in the middle of describing on my text. So that's where th the special character is going to, um, to be. Insert. We're going to go back to insert. Here's something else you don't know you have. It's drawing. Okay. You, yes, you can put drawings in. A, uh, a document and you have to draw them, but you can do that, um, believe me. So down here somewhere is a drawing, hang on. So right here in my text is a drawing of a cloud, okay? I did not insert that from my drive. I actually drew it while I had the document open, okay? I'm going to go to this paragraph and put my cursor in the paragraph and it says pale earth pale the blue dot to ever cherish right this is nonsense text i'm going to put my cursor where i want my image to appear i'm, I'm going to say, oh wow i should put a blue dot there okay so i'm going to insert i'm going to go to drawing and i'm going to select new i'm going to get a little pop-up that comes up and the drawing tool is enabled and now I can use all of these shapes. And if you've gone to my slides uh, workshop before, you know you got lots of options here, right? So we're gonna go to a shape and we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna draw something, okay? Uh, it says something about blue dots. So we'll make this a blue kind of a dot. Um, you can do all kinds of, woohoo! Uh, we can layer dots to make them look, or layer things to make it look different. Um, and this is nonsense, folks. I just want you, <laughs> want you to see that what I'm doing here, okay? So here's my image, okay? For whatever reason, this is the image I need in my document. Oh, by the way, in this image, I could also add an image. So I could go to, I could search for something, right? I'm going to cancel this. I'll show you that in a sec. Here's the image that I just drew. I'm going to save and close it. Where's it going? It's going in the document as an image, as an image. So right here, this isn't two dots anymore. This is two dots that are together. It's one image. So I can make it bigger or smaller as I see fit, right? And if I decide, oh man, I just wanted the one blue dot and I got, oh man, I, kinda, I screwed up. I, do I have to draw it again? No. There's two things you can do right now. You can double click or you can hit the edit button when you select the image. So double clicking, double clicking is just like hitting that edit button. And now when I select what I don't want, or if I change the image in any shape, way or form, and then save and close, now my new image is there. If I decide I don't like that or I wanted to add something to it, I'm going to double click on the image again. And now I'll go ahead and go to the image insert button that was up at the top. I'm gonna to go ahead and search because I know there's nothing in my albums or my drive that I want. And I'm gonna type the word earth. I'm just searching for the earth. Here we go. There's a good one. Uh, by the way, search results shown are labeled for, for commercial reuse with modification when you do a Google search on images. Okay, doesn't mean you're 100% you're totally free, but since you're in education, yeah, you're okay. Um, but just if you have anything that comes up that says uh, that there's copyright protection, don't use it, get something else. Here's the image. I wanna make it smaller, so I do that. And maybe I layer it on top of the other dot. And maybe, I don't know maybe crop it a little. I'm getting stupid about it, but uh, you, you get the idea, right? Now I'm going to save and close. And there's my image that I can resize as I wish. I can wrap text as I need. Um, I can put a margin around it. I can move it with text. I can do anything that I want with this image. 
not only that, but I can edit it and it's in the doc, so I don't have to go finding it. I want to create a closed reading exercise. How can I do that in doc fillable? Ooh, well, okay. You can, you have to think out of the box. All right, number one, I would put the images in a table. So you would create a table and maybe the first column would be where your images are stored, right? And then you resize them and everything and get them all looking pretty and everything. Um, and then off to the, in the second column is where you would have the, uh, the words, the matching or the, the fill in or whatever you, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking above and beyond the clothes. I'm thinking about all the different kinds of, of uh, assignments you could have. So you could have fill in the blank. You'd have, um, you could have matching, you could have all kinds of different things, but then you have to have another area where you would have your students actually put in their answer. Uh, Marianne, I missed what you clicked to wrap the text. Well, you have to click on the image. Okay, so after you insert the image, you click on it, and then you're given a bunch of options down underneath it. So there's a, here's the inline option, here's a wrap text option is next, and then there's the break text uh, margins. If you only want 1 16th of a margin, really small, you could do that, or zero. All right, uh, do you want it to move with text? Do you want this image to be a fixed position? Okay. Uh, or do you want to see the position options? Ooh, look what just happened. So when I insert an image, I have image options. Let me close this. Um, right now, if you're looking at your own document and you don't have anything selected, you do not see image options. You have to select an image, just click on it, and then at the top of your screen, underneath File, Edit, View, Insert, you're going to see an Image Options button, okay? You can also get to it by selecting the More button or the Skinny Snowman. When you've selected the object, there's a Skinny Snowman that appears within its own menu. Okay, so lots of ways to get to it. I'm going to select Image Options, and now I have I can have uh, more options on where I can put this doc this uh, image. But here's some really other cool stuff, by the way. Size and rotation, text wrapping, position we just saw. So when you look at the, uh, the options, you can actually tweak this into minutia. Okay, so here's the break text option, um, I, or the wrap option. I could have it on both sides or the left only. Or the right only. You're not given those options when you just select the, the image and get the little menu here underneath the, uh, the image, okay? But when you look at the image options menu in total, you get a lot of different added functionality to the menu. Uh, the size and rotation, if you make it smaller or bigger, you might want to lock the aspect ratio that keeps the scale the same, okay? Or you might not care about that. So that when I make this smaller like that, um, it, it fits the width and height differently instead of locking that, that ratio. So lots of different things that you can do here, okay? Above and beyond the menu that appears right underneath the image when you click on it. Okay? All right. Back to insert. So drawing is a really, really cool tool. Um, and can I, I chime in real quick? Absolutely. So for me, when I'm working on doc, uh, what I have found is that because I usually work with slides, and if I have, let's say, an image and then I want to put a circle around it or an arrow in docs, you can't really do that. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, if you have an image and you want to put an arrow pointing to that image and it overlaps, you can't do that. So you have to copy that image into drawing and then within there, you can select all those tools and put it and layer it on top of each other. So um, that's just, just a, in, yeah. if you're used to working with um, slides or, you know, things and it's, it's right there on the front page, you're going to have to do an extra step to, to do that in docs. 
Right. So what Elise is saying is here, I'm going to, I've got the slides deck open. I'm going to go all the way down to the bottom here so I can show something without screwing everything else up. So here, if I have, if I insert an image, uh, we'll search from the web. We're going to search earth again. It's a safe topic. Here we go. That's the earth that I want. Boom. Now my arrows and everything are right here on slides. So I can select a line or an arrow or anything and I can put, okay, here's approximately California right here. Now you can't see that's so gonna make it bigger. Boom, okay. Now to get this same image into docs, what you need to do is go to docs, right? Go to the insert, go to not, in, well, nah, not insert or um, I'm sorry, not image, but you go to drawing and then new, right? And then you do basically the same thing. So we're going to insert an image. We're gonna search for the earth, earthy, earth something. Okay, here's the image I want. I'm gonna hit select, wait for the magic. Two, three, one, make it as big or as small as I want. Here's my line tool. I'm gonna hit that, I'm gonna get the arrow. Draw an arrow, make it a little bigger. Where's my line, here we go. Like that, okay. Oops, too many arrows. And then save and close. And there's my image. If I don't like that, if I want to make the arrow red instead of um, black, I could double click on it my drawing tool opens back up and now I can select or change this image in any shape, way, or form that I want. Okay? So yes, it is a little different in, in between slides and draw, but once you get to the drawing tool, the tools are the same. Uh, you can even add text. So we go here, California. And then we can drag this anywhere we want, um, make it smaller, bigger, whatever you want, okay? If that's not big enough, now remember this entire drawing is one image, so now I can make it bigger and the whole thing gets bigger together. Or I could double click on it if I don't like, it. I don't wanna make the earth bigger, but I wanna make um, the word bigger, I could double click on it and make the word bigger, okay? Can I, create and save that image and use it. Sure, Patricia, yeah. Um, but if I've, let's say I forgot to do that and I'm really in a hurry. I mean, I'm just thinking, you know, I, I want it in here, I want it now. I don't want to have to create it and then do it. I can create it right now, okay? If you have an image on your drive, you can certainly insert it into a docs. Um, so you, you know, you go to, a point in your document where you want to insert, you go to image and you search from your drive or your photos. So you can do that, or you can even upload from your computer. Okay, so uploading from your computer, boom, you find it where it's at. How to crop an image. You guys are going way above and beyond docs here. Okay, so uh, this works for slides and, and docs, as long as you're in the drawing tool. Double click the image in the drawing tool. I double clicked. I get these, there's uh, little corners that were added, these dark corners, okay? Um, there's also uh, north, south, east, west handles, okay? And I can drag those. And you see this area to the right on my screen, it's kind of shaded out. That means that's what I have cropped. It's still there, but now I've cropped my document. So when I double click, the easiest way is to use these handles to crop or uncrop. By the way, after you crop something, if you go, oh, I really wanted that one little piece of the beet root to be there, then you can, you can change it even after the fact, even after you save and close, okay? So that's how you crop. All right, here we go. Table of contents, table of contents. So table of contents are really cool. 
Um, if you need, if you're creating a report and you need a table of contents, then you would create a table of contents. Now, here are some points to ponder. Let me make these bigger so we can all ponder them together. A TOC, table of contents, is clickable within a document. Okay, so it's clickable. So after we create a table of contents, it, when you click on something within the table of contents, it goes to that spot in the document. So that's really cool. A TOC is created based on the headers within the document. So when you are creating your document, I'm going to go up, I'm circling my mouse here where it says normal text. Anything that is a title, subtitle, or any type of heading will be a part of your table of contents. Okay, so you need to make sure you have your headers in place when you create your table of contents. Um, can you add headers after? Yes, you can. As edits are made and pages are added to the table of contents, everything updates after the editor refreshes the button. Okay, I'll show you how to do that. Um, after you download a document, let's say I create a table of contents and I go to file, download as PDF, the table of contents maintains its clickability. Mm. So if you have a PDF and your table of contents, or I'm sorry, you create a doc and then you download it as a PDF, the PDF will be clickable. So the table of contents is maintained even in download form. All right, so here we go. I am going to um, make this smaller. So what I did was I copied some text from the lorem ipsum diddly squat uh, text that I had. That's also part of the ebook if you want to download it. Um, this is the document that I copied from. It has headers and footers and all kinds of stuff. So all I did was copy the text. Okay, and I pasted it in here and then I added this, this top section here to remind myself what we were talking about. Um, it has headers. Okay, so here's the introduction is header one, right? Key terms, heading four. The idea is heading two. So you see, I've already got my headers in place. Okay, now I'm going to scroll up to the top. I am going to give myself some space and I am going to go to the insert menu. I'm going to go down to the very bottom where it says table of contents. And before you click anything, look at the options that you have. You have with page numbers. Yes, Google knows how many pages you have. Or you have with blue links. Okay, also notice on those two options, I don't know if they're really small. I, I, I can't make it bigger for you, I already know that. But um, it is um, hierarchical. Okay, it's an outline form. So depending, header one will appear to the far left. Header four will be indented to its position on the document in a table of contents. So I'm going to select this one with page numbers. And there it is. It's just that quick, folks. So right now, this Cosmos Ipsum because I'm the owner, I have to click twice, but anybody else will only have to click once. So right here, here's the header Cosmos Ipsum. And when I click on the link to it, it takes me right there. All right, now to get back, I gotta drag my document up. There is a way to get your, um, uh, your TOC as a, uh, to go back up to the top, okay? That's called a bookmark. Um, so there we go. It was really quick and easy, wasn't it? So you can see key terms right here. If I go there, it is indented on the table of contents because it's a heading four. The idea is heading two. I don't think I have any heading threes here. So let's put one in, okay? Just so that we can see how it works. So here's turnip greens. I'm going to make this heading three. And I'm going to make a bold. And I'm going to make it a different blue. And I'm going to make it a different size. Okay. So that's heading three. 
Now I'm going to go back up to my table of contents and you notice that <gasps> table greens is not here, or turnip greens is not here because I need to refresh. As soon as you add a heading or as soon as you change any of the headers in your document, nothing will appear changed until you click in the table of contents, okay, anywhere you want in the table of contents, and then you're going to get this little refresh button, okay? Right there. Click the magic, and there we have turnip greens. Veggies Ipsum is header two. Turnip greens is header three. Key terms is header four. So you can kind of get an idea of the outline that it's taking, right? The indentation. Um, and if you want to change those, you can. You would just click on the the uh, the the line that you want to move, and you would move the um, this thing. I never knew what that thing was called. If anybody can tell me, you get a prize. <laughs> this arrow thing. <laughs> Suppose that my format tool or paragraph format, I don't know what it is. Anyways, um, so, and then we've got all the pages numbered as well. Now there was another option. I'm going to do an insert table of contents with blue links. Um, this is good because um, now people know that they're clickable, whereas they might not know unless I told them, hey, you can click on the table of contents. Okay, the margin line. Isabel, thank you very much. Thank you very much. What did I click to assign header types? Okay, I'm gonna scroll down my document a little bit. Marianne, I am going to, here we go. This is a good place for a header. Let's just, I'm going to select text. Okay, when I select text, up at the top of my, above my, um, my margin line, <laughs> I will see the words normal text. Okay, I'm going to, it's a style. I'm going to click on the arrows next to normal text and I'll get all kinds of headers. You can change these headers to anything you want. Um, if I decide that, and let, let's just say I change the formatting first. Okay, it's still normal text, everybody. It's still normal text, but I want it to be bold. I want it to be orange and I want it to be 18 points. Okay. So now I've select that text. I go up to where it says normal text and I'm going to make this header three. I'm going to update heading three to match. Okay. That means all my heading threes will turn orange, be 14 point or 18 point and bold. Okay. And when I go back to my table of contents and hit the refresh, There we have hunting bonjour, but you will also notice that turnip greens, when I go there, is, oh, how come it didn't do it? So normal text is where, um, underneath normal text, I should say, is where all of your headings are, okay? All right, and you can see we've got the two different kinds of table contents. Now here's the thing, folks. Uh, table of contents is really cool because it is clip clickable and because it downloads as part of your clickability, okay? But if you don't need that, don't do it because it takes up space. There's a much better option for your students. There's a much better option for your staff. Don't waste space on a table of contents unless you need to print out the table of contents. What am I talking about? I'm talking about this guy over here. It is the document outline, and that's within the view menu. Um, if you don't see it, you might have to go to view and uh, show document outline. Okay, it's clickable. You can click it on or off. So view, show document outline. And then when it opens, you get very much the same as um, table of contents. The, the thing, great thing about this is that I don't have to hit refresh. It's always done. As soon as I add something else that's a heading, it will be part of the document outline. And yes, it's clickable, okay? How do you make a heading clickable as a hyperlink? I blinked and missed it. You don't, Gloria, you don't. You don't do it, Google does. 
So in the table of contents, as soon as you create a table of contents, uh, let me put it right here, because I took it out. All right, so I'm going to insert table of contents. Just going to choose one of the options I have here. Okay, there it is. I didn't do anything. All of these are clickable now. It's based on the heading type, so you don't have to do any linking. Okay, now here's the thing. Most of you are going, well, yeah, but man, all that scrolling up and down and up and down. Yeah, I go to the table of contents. I, I come all the way down here, but then I want to get back up to the, to the table of contents. Okay, this is advanced. I'm going to show this once, maybe twice, but no more than that. So if you miss it, you're going to have to wait for the video. Okay, all right, here we go. First thing I need to do is go up to the top of my page and I'm going to call this table of content. I should have had text that said table of contents. <laughs> okay, I'm going to select that text. Um, and I'm going to make it a title. All right, so table of contents. There we go. Um, now, I am going to insert, and then I'm going to go to bookmark. Okay. What that did was that created a link. Okay. It created a link. All right. Now, I'm going to scroll down to Cajun Ipsum. And I am going to try to remember how I do this. Here we go, link. Okay, so I selected the text Cajun Ipsum. This is a heading way down the document. Okay, this is one of my headings. Now, when I select the link tool, when I select insert link, however you do it, you're going to insert a link. Look underneath where it's asking you to paste a link or search. You're not going to do that. You're either going to select a heading or you're going to select a bookmark. Okay, so I'm going to click on the arrow next to bookmark. I should only have one right now. Here it is, table of contents. I'm going to select it and then I'm going to apply. This becomes a link now, doesn't it? I wonder where it goes. Hmm, table of contents. So now I can go back and forth between this heading and table of contents. Okay, how do I change the TOC to have page numbers rather than blue links? Okay, um, the easiest and simplest way to do it is not to change it, but to delete what you have, Corey. Uh, here, I have page numbers here, right? So I'm going to delete this table of contents, making sure to get rid of that little refresh button because it doesn't want to be deleted. There we go. All right, and then I'm going to go to insert uh, table of contents and get the blue links instead. So that's the easiest way to do it. Um, Corey yes. had a second part to her, the question. Um, mm -hmm. Can you have both page numbers and blue links? No. Isn't that a bummer? Unless, here's, here's an idea. Um, here, here's a way to do it, because Melinda doesn't like being told no. Uh, Corey, you might not either. So what I do is I, I insert the table of contents with the page number. Oops. I insert the table of contents with the page numbers, right? And then I know that introduction is on page two, right? So then I go here, and I tab over a little bit, and I put two. <laughs> there you go, page two. So if you want the page numbers in there, you have to put them in yourself. Um, by using the table of contents with the page numbers, you can um, actually uh, get the page numbers in there. Oh, and Melinda just thought of another way. How about this? You put it in as table of contents with numbers, with page numbers. You select the entire text, okay? You make the text blue, and then you make it underlined. Voila. Then you don't have to worry about this. Gosh, I'm smart. Why didn't I think of that before? Okay, so yes, you can. Corey, you got it. I got to come back in the room. So um, in just a minute, so I'm, I'm going to count to 10. 
or so. For clarification, the handout is available then on this resource link. The handout is going to be available right now on this slide's deck. Boom, here it is, Dane. So HTTPS bit.ly docs to see. Okay, bit.ly, yes, the uppercase matters. If you don't type it in uppercase, it'll say, uh-oh, we don't know where this is, okay? By the way, there was a question that came up, can you link within slides? Absolutely, you just do it a different way. Okay, so on the table of contents, all of the blue text are links. Well, how did you do that? I selected the text, okay, I went to the link tool, and then on slides, you're given the option underneath where it's blinking, paste a link or search, there's an option slides in this presentation. So when I select the arrow next to it, I will look for these slides that I want to link to. And here it is, general info. And I'm going to apply, boom. And now this is a link, whereas this is not. Create new docs from is not a link. Docs journal info is a link. So that when you open it, this is live right now. And if you had it open before, just hit refresh. And you'll see this is a link that opens this page that I just linked to. By the way, on all of the pages, there's a TOC return link. So you don't put in bookmarks. You just add a, an image or some text and then have it go by linking to the correct page. 